And I found this from going through the Barnes and Noble blog from an article earlier this year by Jenny Kowecki. I hope I'm saying her name right. <laughs> Six YA novels that subvert the mean girl trope. Oh. I know you're not always writing about sort of interpersonal relationships, but this could apply to villains. So she just kind of opens the article with, she's a cheerleader, she's out to get your best friend for no apparent reason, she's the ever popular mean girl of the fictional teen universe. While we love a good mean girl, and we could substitute, you know, um, antagonist, we also wonder about her backstory. Why does she hate everyone? What's going on behind the scenes? So. I guess it was saying how, you know, even with the mean girl, you have to give them some sort of human quality that, that makes you maybe feel some empathy or gives you some reason for why the person is the way they are. Similar Absolutely. To- yeah. We always say antagonists um, are the same as protagonists. They believe that what they're doing is right, usually. I mean, sure, you could have someone that's like crazy arch and, you know, maybe there is no motivation. But for the most part, there's a reason why and every character should have motivating factors. They're much more interesting that way and should have their own reasons for doing things. I mean, the best, most classic example is Star Wars, um, Darth Vader, right? Um, and they studied very classical archetypes when they were putting those movies together. But so Darth Vader is a hugely frightening, scary, domineering antagonist, but we do find out his backstory. We do learn that, um, no spoilers, but it was Luke and Leia's father and that he had his own journey in arc and there's three films that address that. So, um, and as much as people criticize them, what I love about episodes one, two, and three is that they do give you more insight into his character. So then when you watch the originals, you understand him more. Um, and you're starting to see more where character, uh, where authors are flipping in films and looking at the antagonist. Disney's Maleficent did that, where they looked at Maleficent and did a whole movie from her point of view. Um, and there have been quite a few books that have done the same thing. Wicked, uh, again, looks at the Wicked Witch of the, is it West? East? I can't remember. But it's, um, you know, Wizard of Oz, but it's retelling the story from her point of view, the witch. So I think that's a really interesting exercise to think about. And I think when you're developing out characters, it's always good to look at um, what are their motivations, what are the things that have shaped them in their lives. Um, in my story, um, the religious contingent that runs my underwater colony, the 13th Continuum, um, they believe that what they're doing is right. They believe that it's saving their colony. They have, you know, that their religious beliefs are important. Um, you know, even if they're destroying the world that they live in, um, but they believe in what they're doing. And I think that's really important.